Hey everybody, Gene from Gene's Green Machine. Today we're going to take a look at my latest design uh, for a pedal generator. Uh, this time I'm using a uh, spin bike, stationary bike, with a um, big flywheel on it. So it's got this extra, you know, I don't know, 35 pound flywheel I believe that's on there. Um, and I'm using, using a similar design to what I used before with the uh, RC motor uh, going to a uh, bridge rectifier, which is inside this box up here. Um, that's all I really have in there is a bridge rectifier, the uh, meter that you see, along with a couple of uh, sockets that um, you can plug into. Well, what's it take to build this uh, pedal generator? Well, not much. So here we've got our, our motor um, with three wires that come out of it. Here's a sample motor. Um, you've got three wires that come out. These are alternating current wires. Uh, the alternating current is, is created when this, um, the magnets are the, on the outside of this motor are, are uh, moved past the coils that are on the inside of the motor, um, creating the alternating current. Now we want to get to direct current um, so that we can charge stuff. Uh, and to get to direct current, uh, we need a bridge rectifier. Come out of that with a uh, and connect it to a meter, so we can see how many volts and watts uh, amps we're generating. And then uh, at the end of the end of the line, we have a, a socket, um, and that's just like one of these guys. Um, simple thing; it's got a plus and a minus on it. Um, so the challenge of this uh, project is trying to figure out, you know, what's the size motor I need, how how many RPMs is the uh, wheel spinning at. Uh, and so on uh, to get the right voltage. Um, the goal is to get uh, somewhere between 10 and 15 volts um, to power uh, socket adapters, uh, inverters, and so on to be able to get useful power out that we can use to um, charge our cell phone or power a television. All right, how do we figure out what size motor we need for our uh, pedal generator? Uh, so let's get through some givens. The circumference of the flywheel is 57 inches. The circumference is 9 inches. Um, so uh, let's talk about motors a little bit first. So uh, motors are defined by uh, the, their kV. Um, so a 100 kV motor would need uh, at 100 RPM would generate 1 volt. Um, so using that knowledge, we'll figure out what size motor we need. Comfortable pedaling um, RPM of the flywheel is about 250 to 350 RPM. So 57 divided by 9, uh, 6.33. Um, and that's how many times the um, small wheel will turn uh, with every rotation of the big wheel. But if we take the 250 RPM as our, our slowest speed and multiply that by the 6.33, we get uh, about 1,583 RPM. Um, and so that is the RPM of the small wheel. Um, at 200 uh, RPM from the flywheel. Let's take some voltages and do some math to figure out uh, what what kind of KV we want to get to. To get us to 10 volts, um, we'll take that 1583 and divide by 10, or 158 KV motor. Um, to get to 11 volts uh, would be 1583 divided by 11, which gets us uh, 143.9 kV. A 140 kV motor, uh, that would be about the right size for us to do this project. All right, so what are the components of this pedal generator? Uh, so we got we start out with a uh, spin bike. Uh, it's a pretty basic spin bike with a 35 mm, pound flywheel. Um, attached to that, we've got um, a couple of brackets um, that I use some some washers and so on. Drilled, drilled a couple holes in the side arms of the uh, spin bike. Uh, use some washers to get the spacing right so that the the wheel lines up with the flywheel. Um, 
and then uh, use these brackets and the bolts to kind of get so these are both parallel. Uh, and then I put this um, bungee cord on there to get tension on the wheel uh, so it keeps good contact with the flywheel. Uh, so then uh, this motor is a 140 kV motor. It's a uh, uh, motorized um, skateboard motor. And hooked to that is this um, is a Bainbots wheel. This wheel is a two and seven eighths inch wheel. And then uh, I use the Bainbots uh, hub. <clears throat> it's a, uh, it's a T <clears throat> T81 uh, uh, wheel and hub. <clears throat> and this is an eight millimeter shaft. So the shaft um, hub uh, interface is eight millimeters as well. And so then we come up to the, uh, we follow the, the wires up and it, the connector that came with the motor is this MT60 connector. So I just um, made a, uh, a pigtail of an MT60 connector uh, with the uh, three wires that came out of that just to get me up into the box. Uh, and so I've got a little cutout for the box, a little hole there. And then hopping inside of the box, we see the, um, uh, I have a bracket here or this U-bolt uh, that holds the plate on there. And then I have the uh, bridge rectifier hooked to a metal plate. The metal plate actually helps dissipate some of the heat um, because that bridge rectifier gets pretty warm uh, as you're cranking out uh, some, some watts. The side of the bridge rectifier has a little map and shows us uh, which wires uh, go where. So the, uh, these two and this wire are alternating current wires. These two and this wire are alternating current wires. And then the plus and minus uh, Pluses in the front, minuses in the back. Uh, the order that you plug these, uh, the three yellow wires uh, from the motor, doesn't matter. There's no sequence. The they're all they alternate as the motor spins around. Uh, so then, coming off of the bridge rectifier, we hop into the meter. Uh, so the meter, we just go, you know, two wires on one side for input, and then uh, two wires for output coming on the other side. Uh, and we go to these um, five wire connectors that um, one for plus and one for minus uh, going to the two sockets. I could add actually uh, two more sockets to this because I still have some open spots on these uh, five point connect port connectors. So I could actually do uh, a total of, total of four sockets on this, uh, this setup. So there's room in here to actually do more sockets if I wanted to. And then, uh, so if we give this a spin, we can see, uh, uh, some voltage generated doesn't take much to get me up to charging voltage 10 volts would uh, would charge a uh, uh, would get one of those uh, car adapter chargers uh, charging my cell phone and another beautiful thing about this setup is if I go the other way it still charges so I can pedal backwards if I want to I'm pedaling uh, at a very casual pace right now, and I'm getting 9 or 10 volts out of it. If I speed up a bit here, I get up over 16 volts. So I, get, I don't want to spin too fast, uh, but what I do find is as you add load to the, um, to the circuit, uh, that voltage will be tempered by the uh, uh, power that's being pulled off. All right, let's try and power this 32-inch. Uh, uh, LED TV. Uh, I got it plugged into this AC to DC power inverter uh, coming into the pedal generator. Uh, so we're going to try to use this RC motor uh, based pedal generator to power this uh, smart TV. So let's see if I can get it to uh, fire up and uh, watch some uh, Netflix. TV's on. There's no antenna hooked to it, so uh, I'll just go into the smart TV features of this television. It's like draw. It's about 2.3 amps right now. Uh, I'm generating about 12 or 13 volts. And 
step up the game a little bit. I've got the uh, 55 inch uh, LED TV. This is another smart TV. Uh, just plugged into the uh, power inverter. Uh, AC to, a DC to AC power inverter coming to the pedal generator uh, just like we did before with the 32 inch TV. Yeah, about 60 watts just for the, for the TV before the smart features come on so that uh, smart TV CPU seems to need another 40 watts or so. Yeah, it's just at about 100 watts right now. All right, so powering a TV uh, is all well and good, but what if you want to uh, charge some devices? Say uh, you have a power outage and you want to uh, charge your mobile phone or some battery packs or charge a computer. Uh, I just have this uh, socket extender here um, that's got four sockets on it, plugged into, um, this is a uh, Anchor uh, two port charger. So let's charge, plug in the two battery packs. Uh, I have a USB-C charger that's gonna charge a, a laptop. Uh, Android phone plugged in there, Surface Pro 3 charger, and then I have a, a fan here to keep me cool. So it looks like we're pushing about 60 watts. Uh, you can add a, a battery pack uh, to this circuit um, without any extra um, uh, electronics needed. It's just, I just have this uh, socket to socket connector. Uh, when I plug that into here, um, it's not gonna make the motor spin because the bridge rectifier acts as a blocking diode. Um, and keeps the uh, motor from spinning. Um, and we get a reading on here of what the charge of the battery pack is. Uh, it shows about 12.4, almost 12 and a half uh, volts. So anytime I'm pedaling, uh, generating more than 12 and a half volts, uh, it's actually gonna be charging those devices and uh, putting power into the battery pack. Um, so um, let me plug in the all the devices. So I'm at 12.6 volts, so I'm actually charging everything right now. Anything, anytime I go above that 12 and a half volt, say I go out and up to uh, the 13, I'm actually pushing about 85 watts because the, the extra wattage that I generate goes into that battery pack. So it actually gives us, gives me a little more resistance. So if I want to go faster, I can zoom right on up to, to uh, 15 volts. I don't want to go above 15 because it might damage that battery pack. But as I go higher, so let me get as close to 15 as I can. So I'm at about 14.7. I'm pushing about eight, about 95 watts. So a lot of that is going right into that battery pack. So I'm actually charging the battery pack as well as all the other devices. The battery pack will also help in powering a TV or uh, other devices that need a little more stable current. So basically that battery pack acts as a stabilizer, a buffer. Hopefully I've inspired you to build your own pedal generator, uh, whether it's for fitness, whether it's for uh, emergency preparedness, um, whether it's to put in your um, bunker for the uh, zombie apocalypse, whatever your, whatever your motivation is. Uh, but this is actually fairly easy to build. Um, if, you, if you look on my website or look on the Instructable uh, uh, page I've made, there's step-by-step -step instructions on how to build this uh, and all the parts and tools that you'll need. Uh, so follow the links that I have on the on the uh, those two pages, and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I appreciate all your support. Okay.